Hi and welcome back uh, to this video series on the RP75. Um, just a quick uh, starter, one of my um, subscribers has asked um, what I'm using power supply wise. So uh, basically this is my um, bench power supply, let's get a little bit closer. Um, basically it's got two channels, so I've got two separate outputs. At the moment I've got them ganged together, so it's allowing me to run a maximum of 64 volts because I've got 34 volts on each, sorry, 32 volts on each channel. Um, so basically I, I've just ganged them together and I've got the um, positive and negative in the furthest points and the centre three are all joined together to earth. Um, in normal use it does allow you to put different voltages on different parts of the equipment at the same time so a twin channel um, power supply is useful. This one's got a maximum of 5 amps which is more than enough for the majority of work that uh, I do here anyway. Um, as I say we've got digital readout, variable voltage, um, current limiting and what, what I've got here is you've got a, a free and track mode. So basically, I'm um, whatever I do here uh, is the same over this side. So if I up the voltage here, it ups it over there. I say at the moment, I'm just um, geared up with, with this one purely for power and the hacker radio. So six volts from each channel, so that means I've got 12 volts coming at the end of the plug. I just wanted to use just the one channel, take the bridge out pop that in there. So yeah, and current limiting, again very useful. I tend to turn it down. At the moment you see the current limiters coming on so there's no output. Take it up just past that. Then if anything is wrong with the radio it's not going to do any damage, it will just go out on the current limiting. Um, once you're up and running obviously you can turn it up because once you start turning the volume up on these things the, it does draw a bit more current so you need the limiter turned up a bit further. So yeah, that's a quick overview of that. So uh, where are we then? Just get you back down on the radio. Okay, here we are back on the bench with the um, Hacker Super Sovereign. Um, I've downloaded and printed the um, service menu. I've got it on my iPad, but um, I just find it easier sometimes to pick this up. I've got a double-sided printer as well, so I can print both sides at once. Um, basically got this from the Hacker uh, Yahoo group so anybody that's interested in Hacker or at Roberts get yourself subscribed to both of those groups on Yahoo and um, there's so much information available there there's all the like um, in, uh, users instructions for this one even I've managed to get hold of so uh, say this lot will be going out to the new owner anyway so that will be on its way to him but I'm going to use it for the purposes of um, running through this one. So it's pretty pretty comprehensive, it tells you about removing it from the cabinet. You can either remove it in one lump or you can take the amplifier board out first. I think what I'll do is I'll take the amplifier board out first. It's a pretty straightforward, just a case of um, pulling off the speaker terminals. Come off, come on. There we go. These terminals here, that's the power supply coming in. That's the input from the rest of the board. So let's uh, undo this wire. That's, that wire should be taped underneath that tape. But um, as I say, I popped a a temporary area on this one. I've got it. I'm hoping I can find another one, which I'm sure I can. From a, I'll have to rob it from another one. <laughs> yeah, basically that's that, and that board should, in theory, slide out. There we are. One amplifier board. Amplifier is hidden in underneath there, you can see that. It probably is trying to focus on other stuff, but uh, yeah, that's the amplifier board anyway. 
So we'll go through that, test everything out, make sure it's all up to spec. Battery box, this has seen better days. Looks like some batteries have died in here at some stage. But it is intact. Looks like it needs the terminals. No, I think they're alright actually. Yeah, that should be okay. I just need to replace these labels. Uh, they are available to uh, print back out, so I will be doing that. Uh, it's got some webbing straps in the bottom here. Again, they're in there. Just. So that will all get cleaned up and reattached. Not really sure the idea on those, to be fair. I mean, they're a bit of a pain. I've got them in my other radio. In fact, I've taken them out of one. I think it just enable you to pull the battery tray out somehow. I don't know what the thinking was behind that. Anyway, so to get the thing out of the cabinet totally, you've got to undo the bottom screws. So I'm just going to pop a squirt of WD on these first because as I say it's not come out of the chassis before. Just two screws inside there. Hopefully you can see this, I'll get you in a little bit closer. <coughs> so yeah, in underneath. Phillips screws. Let's get a little tin going for the bits. be withdrawn up from the top of the cabinet apparently. This battery box is a bit of a pain. I think there were snap terminals on there at one stage but uh, it can't be unsnapped anymore. Here it should be loose now. There we go. Right, let's clear the decks down a bit. Make a bit of noise. Let's pop that amplifier port back over there. Because she's coming out. Oot of the case. So let's put the case to one side. I'll keep the amplifier board here. The case is a restoration project in its own right. Put that out of the way. So there we have the chassis out. Very straightforward. So. It's a little bit of whatever it is, is a little bit bent there, so uh, I should tap that back out. Is that plastic? Yeah, it looks like a bit of plastic there, so that's um, obviously walked through many years of sat on a windowsill, I expect. Aerial, aerial calls are in place, which is good news. Very rare you need to touch those. I won't be touching the aerial coils. A little bit of corrosion, nothing too much. Yeah, 
overall that's looking pretty good. I did, uh, while reading through the instructions, I did see that um, the band spread control is actually done with a variac, which is rather neat. So it's just a case of voltage operated um, frequency, really. Well, that is on. All these boards are numbered. This is the A505 board, which I believe is the AM board. 506. Let's have a look. Let's have a look to see what board does what. So amplifier A two and one. That's that one there. That's the amplifier board. B211. I don't expect a lot of difference. So 506, which is this board here, is the FM IF board. Although a lot of it, I believe, is done on that some IC there. 505 over here, so as I thought, is the AM. IF assembly, a switch panel, 606 is this one up here, and then we've got a tuner T312, well, this is T308 on this one, so Got a different tuner, possibly. Five oh five. So let's see if I can find the schematic for it. That'd be two on one. T three oh eight. Yeah, so we have got the schematic for that. Yeah, brilliant stuff. See, that's the tuner board. So yeah, all there, all good. We know it's all good because it works. So at the back of the boards then. Okay. Looks like we have a modern resistor in there. Possibly the uh, manufacturer's fix for something, I'm not sure. Sort of a random ceramic disc capacitor. There's various little labels stuck on this. Looks like S SB77 27 2 be 27th of February. Another one was 77 there. Well, it's not 77. It's definitely earlier than that because the R, R, uh, the RP 75 MB superseded this one. Okay. Another little board stuck down in there. That's that must be the other tuner board then. Yeah, that possibly is another tuner board. What's that? TC one oh eight. TC one oh eight. Let's have a look. Two. 
105. Yeah, TC 108. Yeah, that's that little board tucked in there. Yeah, very nice, very nicely put together. I'd say you're not going to find much wrong with these. Let's see what felt washers there. Apparently that's um, something you must have for some reason. There we go. That's a, just a clean up job really. I'm going to take this um, top plate off. going to mean getting all these knobs off which is going to be tricky so I'm going to pull off the ones that I can first we'll say we've already we already know that it works on all, all bands so I'll choose anything mechanical to take these off Okay, a bit, mate. Cool. These little knobs, I know from working on hackers before, they can be a pain. Okay. They ain't moving anywhere. So what I'll probably do, this is a really thick aluminium um, top on this, top panel on this one. So, uh, I'm going to see if I can squirt a little bit of uh, WD in there. There's a bit of corrosion on a couple of them. Just to free them up. Those are done. I'm not going to get into that one, he's too far down. This is a route through the little hole there, let's have a look. Yeah, I'm going to square that down there. Hole. There's a hacker to do that for me. Right, so I'll let them soak for a little while and then we'll have another go at taking them off. Okay, I'm just removing the top panel now. This again, it just looks like there's four screws never come out before by the looks of it. So I've let the um, knobs soak in WD for a minute. Which has now got all over my hands actually. I've taken the battery tray out of the way as well. I'm going to need to look at um, refixing that a bit better than it was. me doing a botch up about well I'm trying to think yesterday how long I've actually had this radio for and it's um it's longer than I thought because uh, I bought this when I was an apprentice I think well, I might have just come out with time so I bought this probably in the mid to late 80s, possibly early 90s, so I have had it for quite some time. So, let's see uh, the top panel's moving, which it is. Let's see if these knobs are going to move. 
Oh, yeah. We have movement. Good old WD-40. Yeah. Ooh. Let's see, let's see what I'm up to there. Let's see back out a bit. Let's see how they are coming. Good job. And the band spread, are you going to be nice as well? Yes, you are. Okay, so a bit of wiggling. Cool. I say he's never been apart this one. It's got a bit of leverage underneath there. Still fighting. There we go. There we have it. On top panel. So looking a bit dirty. Needs a bit of touching up. Um, we've got a plus. There's a minus missing there. That. So. You can't see again. <laughs> My camera works not good today, is it? Let's get you a bit closer. Okay, so this is the top panel off. As you can see, I've got the minus missing off of this side. That shouldn't be too difficult to paint back in. Plus, is just about hanging in there. I say there is a bit of paint in this area. Which is going to be a pig to remove because um, I don't want to remove the lettering. Definitely don't want to remove the lettering. So that's going to be very tricky. Um, I won't be using any sort of foam cleaner or anything on this because that will just totally wipe the writing off of the thing. This is real delicate and this one is in pretty good nick so I don't want to mess with that as you can see all the wording is is intact on it so this one's just going to get a little bit of soap and water to start with I've got a little fleck of um, paint up here that I can experiment on to see what it is um, uh, it would be nice if it was in motion but I doubt it it's better as gloss um, say so it's an anodized top very nice. Lots of grime in that and underneath there, which I don't think I'm going to get that out. Yeah, so slide these station markers out. They just slide, slide along and out of the end of the channel. Where are we? That's one there. That just in case of sliding it along and out the end. So if they want a load of crud in there. Just brushing that out. Again, these are quite delicate. So yeah, that's ready for cleaning. And so you can see I've got to touch up some of the paint here. So what I'm probably going to do is mask that and do the top and bottom repaint them totally. Be interesting to see how that comes up. So what have we got in underneath? Nothing too worrying in there by the looks of it. All um, 
all looks intact, a little bit of corrosion in places. Both our little station markers, they'll need just a bit of touch up, a bit of tip axe or something. Careful not to get anything on this green and red tape. Very fluorescent. Yeah, so that'll just need a bit of cleaning, a bit of lubricating on the pulleys. I'll make sure they're all lubricated. Try and find an aerial. Polish all these knob tops. Relu oh, I was going to say. <laughs> Reluctant to take them off sometimes because they're glued on, but these don't appear to be, which is good news. Some of the Roberts ones, they actually put a blob of glue on. I suppose it's good practice to put something back there because sometimes when you pop a button, if it hasn't got a good contact on the actual shaft, you just pop one of the other ones clean off. Right, so they can all be cleaned up. Nice, and the battery test one as well. Very fragile aluminium tops on those. So many radios got them missing. battery indicator well, that looks like that's going to need to come out and be straightened up a bit it looks like it's been pushed back in there just on a couple spring clips by the looks of it I suppose that's to dampen the mechanism yeah so in all that looks okay just a bit of a clean up in there general decrud and lubricate Brilliant. Now that's actually the base and treble board there, look, by the looks of it. Mm. Yeah, so I'm going to have those pots out. I'm going to have the on off volume control out as well, clean that. So there we go. I think that's enough for now. I'm going to get on and uh, do a bit of investigating of some of the components now so that'll be in the next video so thanks again for watching if you enjoy it or you um, want to see some more give me a thumbs up and uh, I'll say this is going to be quite a few videos I would think but uh, I'll try and keep them as short as I can thanks for watching